alongside me are my uh, roommate over there, Mr. Evan Davis. We also got reporting live from home, Mario Russo and Adamo Ramoli. And we're reporting live after uh, Columbus Blue Jackets versus Toronto Maple Leafs game that started off really well. It was one of the most dominant first periods we've ever seen. But then the Toronto Maple Leafs decided in the locker room, what type of ending do we want to give Leafs fans? Either the smooth sailing we hold on to the lead or no, let's actually decide to give them a heart attack. And ultimately, uh, they decided to go with the latter. And we had a bit of a crazy ending. We ultimately won it 5-4, but that included... Patrick Line scoring a goal to make it 5-4 with 44 seconds left in the game. This one should have been over from the start because we absolutely dominated them, but it ultimately wasn't. It was a crazy game. I'm going to ask you guys, what do you make of the game we just saw? I'm going to ask Mario first. Yeah, so I, I looked at a lot of things when I was watching this thing. Uh, a lot of smaller details and all the bigger ones that we've seen more on a larger scale over the past couple of games. I think this game really kind of showed that we, in regards to trade deadline, I know we might touch upon it a little bit today. Uh, maybe what the real focus could be, and maybe this is just my opinion, but I, I think it's all pointed towards the defense. I don't know if it's just the goalie anymore now. I'm, th- I'm just pointing out this fact that in front of our net, it is so easy to drive that place, get in that opportunity, that opportune spot and cash in deflections, rebounds, whatever you name it. It's, it's prime real estate for any team. And I have not seen a team go against another op- opposing lineup so heavily than anyone else that the Leafs are facing because it's so easy to get into those spots. And I think it's just a thing with the defense. They're incapable of boxing guys out and it's not, nobody's, uh, like everyone's to blame. Uh, Brody's done it. Uh, Riley's done it a, a lot today. Uh, Matthews, I saw he was coming uh, on a, I guess, skating back to take the puck. And it was a very lazy shift from him and he couldn't get it. So really some team defense again, like it always is. And more so the actual decor, especially. So I think we sort of narrowed it down between, and maybe I could be wrong. It's just this game compared to the rest, but uh, I saw the decor really act up and something that should really be paid attention to in the weeks to come, whether we see a move or not, that is up to Dubas. And I also saw that uh, I, th- I believe I counted 14 block shots today. That's something I noticed pretty cleanly. I saw Robertson blocking a couple Tavares. He was banged up after a couple he blocked uh, a huge team effort on that standpoint. I think it's a double-edged sword when you're looking at the defense and in regards to the goaltender as well. If all these guys are blocking shots, trying to get in the way of shots, which I saw them do majority of the night, how are the goaltenders, whether it's Peter Morazic or Jack Campbell and that going to get a good read on it? And I was looking at this and I tried to back up my point as best as I could. I looked at, if you guys remember that California road trip they went to, where we could argue that was one of their dominant stretches that they played. Mm-hmm. Block shots were extremely low that game. I, uh, those, I guess, set of games, I, I counted less than 10 block shots over this, uh, those courses. I think I saw 14, 15 tonight, uh, about 15 the game before against the Canucks. So it, it's a pretty drastic amount when you're looking at the defensive standpoint. I'm not saying that's the number one reason they're just in front of the net, but something to think about because uh, the defense has not been it. And I think this game just goes to show for it. Yeah, absolutely. And I completely agree with that assessment. And especially that's something I noticed uh, a few games ago, or actually, sorry, last game against Vancouver, uh, where all of the goals the Canucks scored, I mean, at the end of the game, they ended up scoring six goals. Every single one of them, it was shots from the point that ended up getting kicked in front of the net. There was a ton of bodies in front of the net. And sure, they made Campbell's life miserable, but ultimately it was the defense that wasn't doing their job and was pushing people, sorry, wasn't pushing people in front of the net, and they were just wide open, able to tip in easy shots past Jack Campbell. There's nothing he could do. Uh, and it's just super frustrating because, as you mentioned, the cheapest real estate in the NHL right now is the defense uh, in front of the Toronto Maple Leafs net. It's brutal, and it's constantly allowing teams a very easy road to our very much struggling goaltenders. So it's a huge problem. I absolutely agree with that. And the big difference that I noticed in this game, it was in the first period, I thought we hammered that problem home and I thought we solved it because we looked amazing. Uh, and I thought we were playing a great defensive game. But as I mentioned in the intro, after that first intermission, they clearly had a conversation as a team and decided, what do we want to continue this game? Like, do we want to keep playing great? Or do we want to give the fans a, an entertaining show that maybe makes them have to up their medical insurance? And it seemed they decided to go with that second option. And it was a crazy ending and we absolutely... After a great first defensive period, we completely fell apart defensively after that, and it showed on the on the scoreboard ultimately. Uh, now I'm going to go to a demo. Kind of, what were your thoughts after this game? Um, my takeaways actually from the other team, uh, Dubas. If you're going to go get anyone, please go get Max Domi because holy shit, he had he had a fantastic game. In my opinion, he's um like he had two points, but even the fight, like I sound like. 
an old boomer. Ooh, mm-hmm. he just he rough and tough, domey fighting. I think I think he'd fit nicely on that second line, especially since um, I don't think Robertson's going to be there in the playoffs. I don't even think Robertson cracks in the lineup in the playoffs. Not because he's not good enough, but because I just don't think. Maybe it is because he's not good enough. Actually, I'll take it. He's not good enough. I don't think he's a top six NHL forward in uh, a playoff lineup, and uh, I don't think Kerfoot is either. Who it's unfortunate he was on the fourth line tonight because he, he really didn't do anything wrong. It was more, uh, I guess, Keith trying to get Roberts in some minutes. Uh, third line looked good too, but uh, I think Domi at like a retained. I think he's making five and a half. You get your five point three. You get him at yeah, two. Oh, no, no, no. Two two six five, I think, would be fifty uh, percent of that. I'd do it. I agree. Yeah, depending on who we'd have to give up, I'd definitely be interested because you saw tonight. He's just he's a guy capable of putting up points, but as well, he's a guy capable of making another team's night absolutely miserable. And that's the biggest thing we need going into a playoff series is we need to be tougher to play against. And yeah, getting a guy like Max Domi would absolutely go a long way. But be honest, you're only complimenting Max Stone because he beat the shit out of Justin Hall tonight. I mean, that's really, hey. that, that's really your, your <laughs> the reason you're so positive of him tonight. But no, I, I agree. He had a good game. Definitely something I think the Leafs, uh, as much as the, the rumor mill, pretty much every big name will end up being associated with Toronto just because of how the media does things. Uh, but yeah, like I definitely do think there is a fit there if we end up deciding to give up the pieces to go for Max Stone, because I think he is a great guy that would help our team um but yeah now i guess we'll move over to evan kind of what were your thoughts on this game what were your takeaways because yeah it was a a stressful one overall yeah just you know hammering over six and a half for tomorrow i'm getting ready before these lines move to over nine i mean look i looked at the goals because like i um had something like during the first period but obviously it seemed like a great first for the leafs and i i um NHL app's beautiful. It allows you to look back at all the goals and gives you like 10 second leeway before. And my God, like that pass by Matthews, like, holy shit, that was a nice saucer pass. And then the effort by Marner, like I, I dog on him for being like, not being aggressive, but he was aggressive to the net on that play. And he definitely earned that goal. Uh, the goal that was scored by Matthews. I don't know how Merce Leakins lets it in, but then again, his nickname is Merz Leak. So one of those stupid goals is going to go in, but and Mikheyev's goal was nice, just grinding in front of the net. I mean, a Columbus defender has to be there in order to, you know, stop that from going in. But, you know, that goal at Bjorkstrand scored four on four. I, I Like, you could say it's Matthew's fault. You could say it's Riley's fault. I'm blaming Riley on that because if you see Lilligren pinching, um, who was that, Domi? Who made that pass? I can't remember. Whoever made the pass to Bjorkstrand, if you see Lilligren pinching. Nice this is, Nyquist it, it's just like it's the same thing I'm seeing from either Riley or Muzzin or like it, it's either one defense and that keeps pinching and it's screwing them over like that's a goal that you shouldn't give up and I don't blame Morazic on that because it was a nice deflection by Nyquist he had all the time to do it because he didn't have any contest on it and then dude to end a game like that man like like, fuck, <laughs> that was just like, I, I heard Jared's reaction and not like, you know, thin walls. And I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> like no way this is ending again the way that it did. And I remember just last time they played Columbus, it ended the same way. Like they are up five, three empty net and then line A scores and it's deja vu. But God, it's just like the Leafs need a defenseman. Like as much as Max Domi is great, like, I don't know. Like I, something needs to give because like this last two weeks, their defense is just making stupid plays. And, you know, it's great when you're hammering the goal total, but like, it's, it's not great when you're, (laughs) when you're a fan of the Leafs and, you know, it's just, shit's been really bad for the past two, two, three weeks defensively. And uh, I, I mean, they really need a defenseman in the, in the trade deadline. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And as much as I do agree, Domi is a guy we should look at. He's not my top of the priority list because I'm with you that defense 100% is the biggest priority right now. It just simply hasn't been good enough. And I'm a big Leaf supporter, but it's hard to be super confident uh, confident with this team uh, when looking at not only our decor, but the defensive mistakes we're making. And of course, that goalie tandem that's just really been struggling Uh, more than just, oh, it's a little blip whatever like at this point it's 
hasn't been good enough for a good two and a half months. And you have to hope something changes. But if it doesn't, I don't know what happens because it's getting ridiculous. And not that I think tonight was the worst of it, because I think it a lot more lies on the shoulders of the defensive mistakes. At the same time, I mean, consistently Mrazic and Campbell letting in four or five goals a night, that can't happen on a contending team who standings-wise is a top five team in the NHL, but they sure as hell aren't playing like you right now. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, like, I honestly, like, tonight, I I would say that, like, you can't really blame Mrazic. I'd say the fourth goal, like, dude, it's Patrick Laine. Like, he's exactly, really, yeah. he's been picking it up as of late, but – you know, there was a lot of defensive screw, like just getting screwed defensively. So I actually wouldn't blame tonight on Mrazic. I think it's just been their defense. And unfortunately, Mrazic's the one and Campbell is the one that have to suffer. Definitely. And I'm with you there because I think a good few nights in a row. I mean, as I mentioned, the Vancouver game on Saturday, there was the Buffalo game the other night where, again, I think our goalies are making OK saves, but then defensive mistakes in front are I, absolutely costing yeah. them. I, I'll say this before we, we move on to someone else. Like I was talking with Braden today and he actually made some sense of like, he was at the Vancouver Toronto game and he was saying like the difference between Campbell and Demko is like, yes, Demko gave up four goals, but he made the saves when he needed to. And the issue is that Campbell will give up four goals, but he's not making those necessary saves. And I, I kind of respect where he's coming from. Cause it's like, yeah, Demko, let up a lot but like when they needed him most they can count on him and you can't say the same right now about Campbell yeah absolutely I mean Thatcher Demko there's a reason he's been one of the best goalies in the league uh, this season because at the end of that game when we found ourselves uh down by two we were on fire we really picked it up and Matthews had a bunch of dominant shifts and really was testing Demko but he stopped everything and I absolutely agree with that point where we aren't getting any of that top tier level goaltending from either of our goalies right now and come playoff time you need that and the teams that ultimately are going to end up going far are the teams that are going to have their goalies stepping up and that's just not what we've seen right now of course the hope is they will find that level but until then it, it's it's to be seen um but yeah I mean a very back and forth interesting game against Columbus where there was parts I loved and there was parts that, again, got me concerned about this team's chances in the playoffs. And it's frustrating, but it's the truth that we are not playing good playoff hockey right now, despite our solid record. But, I mean, talking about record, a little bit of a segue here, our record in our last 10 isn't even that good. We're starting to actually see losses. What are they, like 3-7? and seven? No, sure. okay, we're 5-4-1. We're <laughs> and one. But still, I mean, we're oh, starting to see negative results based on our sloppy play. It's not even like we're finding ways to win anymore. So uh, basically, I mean, despite even our record, which it isn't great to begin with, it's more our, just our flawed defensive play, our goaltending, everything. It's just raising eyebrows and really making it hard to – not hard to root for this team. Of course, we're going to stay fans no matter what, but it, it's making it very hard – to confidently bet on this Leafs team. So I ask you, I mean, last week we talked about the trade deadline and I know what your guys' opinions are on guys we need to get, but overall, what does this team need to do in order to find a way to not only more than make a big splash of the deadline, but find a way to actually put together success in the playoffs? Because the way we're playing right now, it's just not looking like a, a confident team. So I guess I'll start with Mario here. What do you think needs to be done with this Leafs team, whether it is a big trade or just something in this locker room that needs to be said or done? Or... Yeah, and I'm going to take the, the latter of your question there. I'm not going to say trade deadline stuff, who should they should acquire. I think uh, we said that enough in weeks prior, and that's all what we've been hearing on the news whenever it's regarding the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm going to say one thing. Get something or someone or something to come into your locker room and say, be scary. This team is not scary by any stretch of the imagination. You talk about playoffs, they have to perform in the playoffs, all this kind of stuff. You're not going to do anything if you know you're up four to nothing and the other team in front of you says, oh, okay, that's cool. It's like a one nothing game to us and we'll come all the way back. It, it, hold it, my it, beer. Hold, yeah, hold my beer. Exactly. It's when is this going to change? I know I'm going to, this is a couple of weeks now where I'm looking back at it and I'm like, man, I am really ripping on this team. hard. And I mean, it's so long, that it's such a big timeline you're looking at where they're just not scary at all. When's the last time you, you felt like this Leafs team dominated, deserved to win every single second of that game, took every single second of that game and ran away with it. What, what game? 
What game did it look like they had that uh, they had that momentum where the other team didn't even stand a chance by the puck drop? You got one? The fact that none popped into my I mind got one, kind of and it happened me. the first game of 2022 where they beat the Sens like six nothing, okay, and the Sens had like half their team out like, with COVID. I, I thought he was talking about like within the recent weeks, not New Year's Day. I have a, I have oh. another one. I have another one too, and uh, it's similar to yours, Adamo. They won seven to one against New Jersey Devils. It's oh yeah, a common that theme. They're basement dwellers. Uh, they have not done anything the about New big Jersey team. Devils. Yeah, <laughs> they have done nothing against a big team. And I'm not saying that this Columbus game is going to show anything. Columbus isn't that big of a team. I think they might make a bit of a run down the stretch, but I don't think they're punching their ticket into the postseason anytime soon with the Metro shape up, which we'll also be discussing a little bit later. But no, I need this. If, if you're looking at a big change, Kyle Dubis, what you want to make, bring a player, bring a, a, a personnel, something into the lineup, into the locker room, and say, guys, you have to become scary. And it's easier said than done. It's not going to happen overnight you can't just come in and say hey uh you guys don't blow these three three nothing leads please don't do that you will be perfectly yeah. fine or else at least it would be would have been a good team four or five years ago we would have been uh the best coaches in the league best gms in the league we do such great work especially leaves twitter as well you have to bring you have to bring something and i don't care how you find it just do it that's going to change this team and make them a more menacing team to play against because these guys are such big pushovers and i i really hate to stick the dagger in this team but with with so many games they're blowing these leads and choking them up it's, it's inevitable it's just inevitable yeah and i agree with that and it's as you mentioned it's not even about an individual piece that'll come and fix it because it's it's an identity i mean it's just the way we play hockey and it's the way not only this year we're playing it's the way for the last years we've been playing hockey and ultimately we've seen how that's ended it's not just something that oh all of a sudden we're going to turn it on when we need to we've shown that we aren't capable of doing that uh because i mean basically the story of last year we had a very good record which as we do this year but ultimately the way we were playing games that same way we played in the regular season it carried over into the playoffs and i'm getting those same fears that despite the fact that we are getting wins for the most part i still think our bad play is going to end up carrying over to the playoffs and if we can't find a way to snap out of this and find a way to play good hockey What's going to happen is the good results aren't going to carry over, but that negative play absolutely is. And we need to find a way to change our game. I mean, I'm asking you guys, I don't know specifically what the move is, but I agree with you in the sense that something needs to be done because the way we're playing right now, it's hard to have a lot of confidence. Uh, I guess I'll move over to Evan. What do you think needs to be done uh, with this team? And again, it could be kind of anything, but just what needs to be done for this team to actually make you have confidence in them come playoff time? Dude, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm looking at Peter Morazic's stats right now, and in 10 of the 14 games he's played and he's given up three or more goals, I mean, fuck. Like, I don't know. Now, the, like, Twitter is all saying, like, a potential flurry for Morazic deal, but uh, – and then having a third team involved, I just – I don't see Marc-Andre Fleury waving his no-move clause – uh, I know he's Canadian, but it just, it doesn't, I don't know, like just moving your entire family for half a season just doesn't, he he didn't even really want to go to Chicago, so it doesn't make sense, but uh, I don't know, man. Like, it's just, it's it's not even the offense because the, they're scoring goals. The issue is, is their defense and goaltending. And I got to say, like Morgan Riley defensively has been atrocious these last couple of weeks. And, you know, it's, I He's a great player, but it's just, man, he's really – I'm actually curious. I'm going to look it up now. Like, I want to see what his plus-minus rating has been these last couple of games because I'm just seeing him on the ice way too much for, for goals against and not enough for goals for. I will say, though, like I keep bashing on them. The one positive thing has to be Michael Bunting. Like that guy has actually been a steal of a deal. And, I, I uh, you know – he's been great but in terms of carrying over into the playoffs it's defense and they got to figure out something because clearly Ilya Labushkin um the Russian bear isn't enough for him isn't enough for the Leafs but you know it's it's just defense man it's really defense wins you championships as they always say so if you don't have that you're screwed and especially against a team like Tampa where they're just so gifted offensively and defensively and goaltending like yeah. I mean, Florida, they would have at least some sort of chance, but I wouldn't see them winning the series, but they, they, they just need defense. Just trade for Chikorin, whatever you can get. I mean, I don't think they'll get Chikorin, but maybe Vince Dunn from Seattle, maybe tomorrow's his tryout, but 
<laughs> I don't know. They they really need. I don't know. Maybe get Carson Soucy if you want to do Seattle. Like, see what they're willing to give up for him. Like, he's he's pretty solid. Like, he plays a defensive minded game. Yep. Block shots can be great on the kill. Like, you don't need like the Leafs don't need a bright star. They just need complementary pieces. Absolutely in it. Yeah, we, we have enough of our stars. It's what we need is guys that will actually make us a scarier and a better team come playoff time and a harder team to play. And uh, that's why, as you mentioned, I mean, uh, Carson Soucy, even a guy I was looking at, I may have brought this up last week, but at the very least, I wrote a DSN article about it. Uh, a guy I'm looking at is like a Scott Mayfield of the Islanders, like a 6'5", big body guy uh, that's pretty cheap, like cap hit wise. And we'll just make you a tougher team come playoff time. And that's the type of guy we need because it all goes back to the same idea that I, our identity, despite the skill we have, is just a weak pushover-esque team that teams have found a way to completely outwork us and body us come playoff time. And it's just the way we're built as much as we have the skill, it clearly isn't translating over. And that's the reason uh, because we aren't a tough enough team to play. Uh, so I completely agree with your point. I mean, the offense has been more than good enough, more than doing their part, but it's the defense and the goaltending that haven't carried their weight. And now a lot of scares and a lot of problems are starting to arise when we start talking about the playoff picture, which it isn't far away anymore. I mean, yeah. we're at the start of March and playoffs start mid-April. Like, we're Can I ask at... you guys? Oh, sorry. Sorry for interrupting. No, 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 no. Worries. I'm just saying like, we're at playoff time pretty much. Like, we're setting up the playoffs now. And the team needs to find a way to get onto their game. Otherwise, we could find ourselves in another very early uh, playoff exit. Can I ask you guys something? Oh. Do, you think, do you think Morgan Riley's overrated? No. no Shut no, up. I think, no. I think no, wait, no, one, one second. No. No, 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 no. No, because, like, I'm just looking at – I'm just looking off of stats. And I'll just say this before I say what I'm about mm -hmm. to say. It's a lot easier to score when you're winning – and I'm looking at Morgan Riley and in 20 losses, zero goals, nine assists, and is a minus 18. That's why I just like just thought of the question because, and he has 36 points in 35 games in their wins. I was just thinking like, I mean, it's a lot easier to score when you're winning. I like this could also just be a testament to the fact that like a guy like him who you're paying big money, if he can't revitalize your team when you're losing, like I just, it's just a question to ask, like, I don't I think don't, he is, but like, it's definitely, it seems like if you're not performing when you're losing, like it's, it's a lot easier to score when you're winning a game. I agree with that. I still wouldn't call him overrated because I, no, mean, I, we know, I don't, we know, we know what Morgan Riley is. It's He's just a, a, like, I was just thinking of it. Like I'm just seeing his stats and the losses and it's just not pretty. And I mean, I, I didn't, I wasn't aware of that stat that he isn't scoring our losses, but still, I think he's a, a capable defenseman. The one thing I'll say that's been a problem I'm noticing recently is I don't really know what Keith is doing lineup wise. I mean, Morgan Riley's a very clear offensive guy, and that's why I like the matchup of him and Brody so much because it's that offensive guy matched with that defensive guy. Now they're trying to throw Riley with guys like Lilligren and Sandine. That isn't where you're going to get the best from Morgan Riley because that line, and it's not only in my mind, it's going to be a nightmare. We saw it on the ice in that game where Sandine and Lilligren, sorry, where Sandine and Riley played together. It was atrocious because, I mean, they're two offensive guys and it just leaves so much room for defensive errors. So mm -hmm. that was just... pairing's a mess. And I don't know what Keith is doing trying to match that up. Like, just keep Riley and Brody together. It's not that difficult. Yeah, I, I, I'm just looking at stats and I'm, you know, like they always just, I'll say like, it's just easier to score when you're winning. So that's why I thought of it as like a potential question, because usually you like pay the guys to like get you out of those sinkholes. And at least recently, at least this season, Morgan Riley hasn't done it. I don't think he is overrated, but it's definitely like something that like analytical people might consider just given the splits. Yeah, well, uh, speaking of analytical people, you know, our uh, analytics darling on the podcast here, Adamo, what do you think the Leafs need to do in order to kind of get out of this and get to a point where we can actually have confidence in them going into the playoffs? Um, I'll give you the boring answer. Uh, goaltending is the most important position in the playoffs, and our goaltending is the worst in the league. Like, it's, I hate to, you know, I can't really provide you with much insight. Like, I get our defense isn't the greatest, but it's not 
it's not awful. Our, our defense is not that bad. Okay. Like even the stats will suggest their expected goals. They're like fifth in expected goals against. So they're not awful, but when you're dead last in save like five on five save percentage since like December, how are you going to win when both of your goalies suck? And I literally think the plan for the Leafs is just lit- literally pray. It's it's pray. It's it's pray Jack Campbell is going to return or Peter Mraz. Peter Mrazek was a nine forty last year. We tend to forget that. We yeah, like I, mean, he missed I don't know. Season. Yeah, it was like twelve games, but still, like if Peter Mrazek remembers, you know, how to stay in Pain his crease, yeah. like and just kind of chill there and make saves, not like go full Dominic Hasek when you're not like nearly as good as Dominic Hasek. Um, I think they're both Czech too, so that's kind of funny. Uh, are they? I don't know. Um, don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's goaltending. If you're going to go get a defenseman, like Mario said, go get someone big, tough, or scary. Go get go get Chara. Go get, <laughs> like, a fucking, like, a big mon. Like, a... Okay. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, one of those, like... Not another Labushkin. Labushkin doesn't really scare me. He's just big. He doesn't really play physical, have we seen? But he's he sound defensively. He's fine. Yeah. But, um, like, a Jake Muzzin, who was good scary... At hockey. Like when when we got Jake Muzzin, Jake Muzzin like scared the living shit out of opponents. And like now that we don't have Jake Muzzin, you know, it's kind of here. We're gonna score on you, but you know, you could score on us, but we're gonna score more than you because you know we're more skilled. So mm-hmm. I don't think that's how it works in the playoffs either. I'm no, I mean, mind you, no, it does not can't take it from me because what have I seen? But yeah. <laughs> That's, that's my analysis. I, do, I would want to add one thing. And I mean, obviously it is absolutely correct in saying that they have to add some physical toughness. It's always been uh, something with the Leafs that they've always had to bring in. And I think it's something they're going to do at this deadline. We mentioned a bunch of names from previous weeks. It's been Stuns, uh, Susie's, uh, Mayfields, like you mentioned, Jared, that you wrote an article for on DSN. Definitely go check that out. Um, link is on actually your page. So you can actually go right to it. If you type that into your browser, you're there. One call, check it out. we got a lot of good stuff. But uh, aside from that, I think they have to bring in more of something around the, maybe I'm not going to say veteran because they've already burned that bridge where they're bringing in old guys and old farts and nothing's happening from that. So I'm going to stay away from that leader, man. I, I think it's to make yourself a scarier team. You have to have a frightening mentality. If that makes any sense to you guys, you have to be, winning the mental game of the things as well as the physical side of things. If you can get those two down, especially in playoff time, I think you're off to a pretty decent uh, start when you're, when you're trying to go for a cup or wherever you're trying to reach. But I think that's something that they should look out for bringing in maybe a leader, someone who has that pedigree. Claude Giroux could be knocking on the door. <laughs> that's, that's the one name that just comes to mind as I'm talking about it, but no, yeah, if, you can get the men- if you can get the mental side of the things down and change this, and change the interior, the makeup, the DNA of this team, I think you uh, you're you're well off. And what what do we forget? And Jared, I remember you mentioned this very specifically a while back. What was another thing? And I bring up the California road trip again. What was the one thing that stood out to you the most? Not just about their play, but uh, the way they handled themselves off the ice. Was it was was there one thing that they said? Yeah, was it, it? it was. What the was fact it? That it doesn't matter what the results are. We're continuing to work hard every night. That and does this does the phrase business trip come to mind? They oh, treated yep. it like a business trip. Well, I have not heard one Leaf make that quote ever since. Why isn't any other road trip like a business trip? Why isn't any other homestand like a business trip? Uh, business from home, if you will. I, I, like, that's what I'm trying to understand is why, uh, why are the philosophies changing as the year goes by? They were so successful in November that California road trip is in there. There's a reason why it was just business because they were just doing great stuff and getting great results from it. If you're going to want to get more great results down the stretch in the playoffs, you got to bring in more guys that treat it like a business trip. I think that's something Kyle Dio is going to have to look out for in the weeks and uh, I guess months to come. Yeah, and absolutely very well put. The one thing before we move on to a, a different topic, the one thing I want to ask you guys, let's say hypothetically the Leafs adopt this new or at least go back to the new mentality and mindset that this is all business. Do you think even if we don't make a single trade at the deadline, do you think our team has what it takes to go far? If everyone's dialed in, everyone's clicked, do you think what's the definition of far <laughs> past the first round? Let's say if the Leafs all play at their best and all are clicking, whatever, but they're still gonna have to play a Florida, they're still gonna have to play a Tampa. 
do you think the Leafs have what it takes to, let's say, go to the conference finals or oh. win the East? Oh, okay. no. Yes. Not that far. Oh they don't have – they they, yes. Put money they, on it now. They don't have second round in them if they're playing Tampa or Florida locked in. Hi- hypothetically, I say yes, but you know how big the if is? And every single loss, every single uh, blowout, every single blown lead makes the if even greater. So obviously it's no, possible. I, I, they, they have the capabilities. They have the talent to do I it. I mean, true. I mean, they're not yeah. because that's the massive they don't if. They have the capabilities because they're mentally fucked. Like they can't, like there's no capability <laughs> because if they had the capability, they wouldn't be this bad. Like over the, and I get the records great, whatever earn their a lot of their wins early in the season or, and then they're not really earning wins now like they're winning games but i don't think i don't think you guys were happy about the no, no, I, I wings. What you're saying. but they have the switch that they can flick on and we've no, seen it flick. yes we have we they have really, yeah, we've seen them we've seen good. them flick that switch on if jack <laughs> Cam- if jack campbell returns to vesna form then maybe i forgot he existed and was a vesna there's a reason bully. why there's a reason why <laughs> you know what if i get a girlfriend i won't be as depressed in my life <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's the man shit. you know what sometimes we just hope for the best and sometimes <laughs> we swing and miss and that's what's happening right now he's uh, right you know <laughs> <laughs> you know i can agree with that phrase too um <laughs> like uh, I, I just i don't I, I think that if is like is so large because it's just it's been bad since 2022 started and yes they're winning games but it's not the way you win in the playoffs like I, 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 I don't think you. they have the capabilities i would say in the first half of the year they had the capabilities but Unfortunately, it's not based on the first half of the absolutely. year. It's based on it's based on the entire season. So absolutely, but it's there. I don't think they're going to switch it. They're, you know how hard and long it takes for these guys to flip a switch. Well, pause, extremely pause, pause. okay. Well, try like fifty four years. There's one. That's like a pretty long that's, switch. I that's don't know. A it's pretty a pretty big switch. Yeah. It's yeah, like it's a tough one. But when you're talking yeah. about this group in regards to the season standpoint, they've done it. And is it going to happen? Every single game, like I mentioned, that happens like this. It just shows how big the if is. There's an if, but yeah, I don't think yeah. it's going to happen. Where there's I, a will, there's a way. Like it, it would have to be Tampa or Flo- let's say Florida. They just I don't know start sucking out of nowhere and like the Leafs turn into gods. Then like we'd probably win, but the chance of that happening is like below zero. Yeah. So. And that sums up I my want, point. There's, that, there's a very that, small chance of activating it, but if you do, and we've seen them do it before, good stuff can happen. Do I think there's, it's going to be like this and they're not going to go make a move like Jared asked? Absolutely not. They, Cal Dubas knows that this team is not capable of uh, keeping that switch on as fast, as long as uh, of a duration that he likes. So he's going to go grab a player so he is, can try to improve. Is one player going to do it? I don't think so. Okay, now hear me out. Here's what I was thinking of. Why don't the Leafs fucking double down you said this before i believe trade your defenders oh go get like philip forsberg and like haggle and just have like (laughs) eight 30 goal scores why not who's to say it can't work (laughs) i know he's an out of the box gm but i don't know if he's that far out of the world no but seriously like if we had eight 30 goals like 30 goal scores on the team say Tavares, Marner, Nylander, Matthews, Bunting, maybe not eight, Forsberg, Hagel. There's seven. So we have seven 30 goal scorers on the team. What are the odds that, like, if three of them start to shit the bed, you're still at four 30 goal scorers that are playing well with, like, average no. goaltending? <laughs> okay, fine. I was, like, trying to say that for a second, and I was just like, no, stay as far away from the GM office as you possibly can. I get your point. Like, that was our issue last year, is our goal scorers that we needed to be good goal scorers forgot how to score goals. Maybe, but maybe we didn't have enough 30 goal scorers. We only had four. Maybe. Or... <laughs> Or no. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Like, I just, I mean, <laughs> has there been any, like, cup winner in history that's been built that way? That's just all offense. Has no there offense? ever been 730 goal scorers on one team? Probably not, but I don't know. <laughs> the, the 80s were a different time. I wasn't really watching hockey back true, then. So true, <laughs> true, true. I, 
I don't think it's a terrible idea. I, I genuinely don't, I don't think, think it's, it's the worst one. idea. <laughs> Right, uh, anyways, I mean, okay, that was, yeah. a, that was a fun little tangent, but I guess we'll, we'll move on to our move away from the Leafs for a little bit. And because we're not talking to the part that's the bread and butter of the Leafs, we're getting into playoff talk because we are, as I mentioned, about a month away from the playoffs. So here's the little blurb in lieu of discussing the Leafs playoff chances. I want to revisit our playoff predictions from the halfway point of the season and discuss whether or not anything has changed in your own little brains up there. So in about January, I asked you to predict your cup favorite at the halfway point of the season. You were Uh told you would be held accountable for this prediction. And now it's time to pay the piper. So now that it's March, we're about a month and a bit away. We're going to revisit these uh, current playoff matchups. You've like been sent lawyer. into. You've been sent into the group chat. What the current matchups would be as of today? I want you to revisit and tell me: Are you still confident in the teams you picked? In case you forgot, let's revisit them. I need a refresher because yeah. I don't know where. For I'm reference, at. so after going back and watching our mid-season prediction video, Mister Evan Davis, who did you predict? Oh, mid-season. Oh, oh, mine was the good. I think Florida Panthers. That's who Evan Davis had winning the cup. Mr. Adamo Romoli. The Boston Bruins. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. And Mr. Mario Russo, host Russo. Eichel's very own Vegas Golden Knights. Oh, okay. I love you. I'm second now. And I had <laughs> the Carolina Hurricanes, which I honestly am so feeling okay, pretty third. confident about. But I mean, okay, so I'll, I'll read out for the viewers who don't have the same visuals we got. Uh, currently, how the matchups would work out in the Eastern Conference, Carolina would play Washington. The Panthers would play the Maple Leafs, which I'm actually very, I would be excited about that. Tampa would play Boston, and the Rangers would pay, play the Penguins. Moving over to the West, where it's very interesting, the Avalanche would play the Predators. The Blues would play the Wild. The Calgary Flames would play the Dallas Stars. And the LA Kings would play the Vegas Golden Knights. A very interesting matchup for our California boy who is a Vegas Golden Knights fan. So I don't know who he'd cheer for there. No, I'm, hey, I, I represent the people of Mark Stone. The Mark Stone truther. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, tell me, uh, based on the teams you guys predicted, as I mentioned, Evan was Florida, I'm Carolina, Mario was Vegas, and Adamo was Boston. Do you think your team's have a chance again boston's playing tampa uh hmm. vegas i mean they're playing la so that's a possible one uh, i mean la's been good LA would have playing the Leafs, i mean i feel like evan would be happy with that <laughs> matchup but then so i'm playing the too. capitals and <laughs> i don't know, tell me like how based on this incorporate your previous prediction but what do you think would happen based on this current uh playoff bracket we'll start with the down hmm. oh um okay so just so i don't look completely stupid i had I, I do remember this now i thought we were talking about i thought you were going to bring up their our preseason picks then oh like when we were on the where, train. Oh, that, yeah that's where, that's I said, where i said where i said uh, i said jets. the jets i still <laughs> think the jets are gonna win the cup fight me um <laughs> no but um what i hear this one um okay so i had the bruins first the flames I remember that. I'm pretty sure I had the Flames. I think right? you had it for a little bit, and then you took. I think you started second guessing, and then you made it Colorado versus. Did I make it Colorado? Wow, the guy. I thought I all over the Flames. I don't know. I think I did the Flames. I'm. I don't know. Whatever. I, I don't okay. Know. But... I did watch it like during the game, and I'm pretty sure yeah. you went back on it. But you know, what? for fun's sake, Calgary versus Bruins. I like it. It was one of them. Yeah, but uh, no, actually, the Bruins were my cup That's pick. I guess. Weird. Uh, they are seven, two, and one in their last five. They're right behind Toronto, right? They're yeah, they aren't crazy far behind at all. Yeah, they're three points behind us because I guess they just lost in overtime or something. Um, to the Kings, I still like it. I still like it. I think Charlie McAvoy is a top five defender in the league. Maybe not top five this year, but he is. Uh, he is my boy. I fucking love. Char- I hate that I love the Bruins, man. Oh, it's the like, I hate the. They're the, such an interesting team. Oh, you know what? That bring that brings me an idea that I saw on YouTube. So we're gonna end with that. Okay, I have a little segment planned now. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, not on YouTube. It was it was soccer. It was a complete report. Anyways, I'm gonna golf track. Um, the Bruins. Uh, I love their team, which pains me 
because Pasternak is fucking sick. Um, Bergeron, how do you not love him? He's just he's 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 an impressive man. He's just he's so the good. Hardest man to hate, and as a Leafs fan, I absolutely hate that. Yeah, God, because he's just he's impressive. Like everything he's about him, he is he's like a Greek god. He is. He is. He's good at defense. He's good at offense. He's handsome. He's just God, great player. And then like they have Brad Marchand, who's just a dick, but I'd love like Brad Marsh. I dude. Well, you might have Brad Marchand in jersey. A Jesus Christ. He'd be he'd be this the city's favorite player. Like he'd have a statue if, outside of Legends Row. If he beat the <laughs> shit out of someone and then scored like the series winning goal, there would literally be he would be the instantly get the key to the city. He would be the mayor's he's favorite. the new Drake. Yeah. The yeah. New Drake. Yeah. But like <laughs> just talking about the, the, the Bruins in general. Um, they have a playoff style team, and mm. when you have a playoff style team, you can go far in the playoffs. So, I still feel confident, even though they're playing Tampa, because Tampa's they say third time's a charm. Third time is never a charm. Anytime someone says third time's the charm, it like never works out. So, give me give me the Bruins over Tampa. Yeah, yeah, Bruins <laughs> over Tampa. And okay, so that would mean I mean, I mean they'd have yeah. to get out of that crazy Eastern Conference, which any team I could see going on around there, other than maybe the Capitals, like or the Leafs. There's no team you hey. can seriously even even these guys, like they can find I was gonna say lightning in a bottle, but there's a team called the Lightning. So they could find <laughs> Magic Mitch in a bottle and <laughs> Mountain Dew in a bottle. <laughs> um it's tough to rule out any team there, but I mean I don't hate it. I like that you're kind of doubling down. I like that you're sticking to it. So Sure, you're still going Boston Bruins. If I'm asking you today, your cup favorite, you're telling me the Boston Bruins. Oh, no. Uh, I will go the team that I played against. Okay, so you can't. The Flames. I think the Flames. The Flames. Flames Flames. winning the cup. Yes. Coming back to Canada and not the place I want it to. So interesting. Yeah, there you go. I don't hate it. Okay. That's your prediction. (laughs) They're 13 and 1 in their last 14. Okay. Great team. No, I think they're a great team. (laughs) <laughs> see them winning the cup i don't even know even that first round against dallas is like that's a defensive oh, no team. no dallas, no. dallas no. Cal- i mean okay dallas's cup run they took out true 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 one. true it could happen it could happen like, was dallas, so was a team, dallas was a team like a week ago that wasn't even in the playoffs but i mean they're hot right now and they are true. they're a team yeah. you can never really rule out just because they're pure defensive mind i mean they're a definition of a team that's the opposite of the Leafs, where they can't score but they could just shut you down to bits. And I mean, that's what helps you in the playoffs. So mm, yeah, it's, it's going to be such an interesting I playoff. I they, love they, the way this very, is. Very yeah. interesting team. Yeah. Move on. Evan, Evan Davis. I mean, I see your jerseys on. You're just inkling uh, to talk about the Florida Panthers who are just killing it. Right? Yeah. I wonder if he's going to take a lottery team to win it. Yeah. <laughs> you well, tell me, I mean, are you still strong on the pick? And if not, what? other team do you see uh, at all um, <laughs> what other team uh, i don't know like well i mean like look vegas when fully healthy is definitely a demon i wouldn't like i i would say this year i wouldn't have them just because i feel like it was a lost year just with the amount of injuries that happened like you know the fact that eichel wasn't in for three months and now like stone and now the lineup patch ready and now the lineup like they just got chemistry issues and i I wouldn't fault them if they went out early just because there's not much that they could do. Like shit happens, you know? And, um, but in terms of my Panthers pick, like, I don't know, like, you know, at the time they were really good. Uh, they've kind of been up and down recently. Uh, they did beat the Buffalo Sabres six to one. So I don't know what that says about the matchup against the Maple Leafs in the playoffs, but uh, I don't know. I'll take to win the cup now. Um, fuck, I don't really, it's so, I feel like it's so wide open that I can't. A hundred percent it is. It's going to be a crazy playoffs. Yeah. I almost don't want to be a fan of a team. Like, I just want to be a fan of the game. Like, fuck. Let's be a fan of the game of hockey. I I gotta gotta think of it. He's a hockey man, you know, comes from a good family, hard worker. I don't know. (laughs) I'll I'll say, I'll give two, I'll say in the, in the Western conference, I would take, I take Colorado to win it in the West and in the East. Fuck, like I don't want to take the Lightning because that's lame. I'll take, 
I'll take Carolina because I think... Go in the dark get, side. Oh. I, I'm going to take Carolina because I think they're going to get Claude Giroux at the deadline. So, Ooh. so I think... And, I think Carolina, who's your cup winner? I'll take Carolina because I like their team. I like their team more top to bottom. And I would, jerk. Tr- I would trust Freddie Anderson, as stupid as it sounds. Like, I would just trust Freddie Anderson more near the bright lights being in Toronto for so many years than I would Darcy Kemper, who's been not really asked to be relied on. So just so we're clear, the Florida Panthers are no longer the second coming of Christ, right? <sighs> I need to hear him say it. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I don't know. It's just, it's tough. Like, if they make a move at the deadline, then, like, then maybe. Like, I, I don't, like, I don't know. But it's just, it's so difficult to, like, say anything because just defensively, they've been terrible lately. Like, I can't, can't sugarcoat it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I really just want to hear you rip on them because it's going to get competitive. If the Leafs end up playing the Panthers there, you already know that it's such a competitive series because I don't even think the Panthers. Like, for us, I mean. like okay. Because I just, the entire year, I'm just like, no, the, the Panthers aren't good, even though I'm, I'm wearing them. I mean, I, I still so. trust their goaltending over – I still trust their goaltending over – That hasn't been I'm, great either. It hasn't been great, Yeah. I don't know. In, gener- in general, I'm just saying that's going to be a competitive series, like a friendly betting one. But I mean, if we if we somehow have any Florida Panthers fans listening, I don't hate your team, and I wouldn't even be mad if they go far. I, just I do. From the beginning, I know. I just from the beginning of the year had a bit of a feeling. I'm like, no, this team isn't good enough. So if they like, I kind of want to be right to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be gonna be completely honest. <laughs> if they do end up getting it early, I'm gonna be an asshole about it, and. <laughs> If they end up surprising me, I'm going to look like an idiot. And I, I'd be mad about it for that aspect, but I wouldn't even be mad being proven wrong because I don't hate the Panthers. Like, they've seen more disappointment than my team. They haven't won since the 90s around. So, wouldn't be mad if they go far, but whatever. Uh, now we'll move over to the host of our show, Mr. Russo. You and Vegas winning it all. Now they have Jack Geichel playing. Do you believe they're the super team that you maybe expected them to be back in January? Well, I know what I'm doing after the show, and it's uh, definitely going to be on a YouTube channel of ours, then rewatching what I said and how I tr- sort of dance my way into saying the Vegas Golden Knights are winning a Stanley Cup. That is, uh, I mean, they're going to get out of the first round, especially. I mean, LA, again, I said it last week, they don't strike me as any real threat, but uh, Colorado strikes me as a big threat. Calgary Flames strike me as an even bigger one, and they're going to probably have to go through one of them. So uh, they're definitely not going to be my Stanley Cup winners after uh, the end of the year. The one I'm about to say, and please do not drink, take a sip of anything. And this one's going to be a uh, a doozer. Okay. So the winner of this year's Stanley Cup is going to be a blue and white team, the New York Rangers. If there is any goalie, if there is any goalie that is capable of getting it done, and I am going to say it after what we're game 53, 55, something like that into the season. If there's any goalie that's capable of getting it done and has shown it is Shisterkin. This guy is putting up century destroying numbers. Uh, one, probably the best goalie we are going to see in quite some time. I, he's, he's, he's ridiculous. And he's going to be the guy who's going to be carrying the New York Rangers over that hump and uh, to the promised land at the end of the year. Uh, it's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a really tough one to get for them to beat the Penguins, who are always a good team in the playoffs. Uh, Sullivan manages that team expe- uh, ridiculously well. So it's going to be a tough matchup in the first round. But if they can get over that hurdle, and maybe they can do the, the second round as well, I think they are well off and have the momentum to get it done when it matters the most in the Stanley Cup final. And who I do, I see them. If you want to throw this one out there, facing in the Stanley Cup file, final it will be adamo's calgary flames fuck this yeah it's hot this team is literally the best they did, literally this team is the best team in canada <laughs> by a very wide margin just because of the way they play and conduct themselves on the ice so mm-hmm. i'm going with the rangers to win the cup man vegas i gotta really see where i dance my way into this conversation because when fully healthy i still don't think they're that terrific of a team because <laughs> their goaltender robin leonard absolutely stinks and evan i think you should be admitting this first of all because that guy can't stop a beach ball for his life. Hey, we got the swap. We taking our time. No, I mean, the Rangers is an interesting one. And for the reason you said, I don't hate it, because there's always the Shisterkin factor. It's a question of if he can continue this play, 
how could you doubt the Vesna winner? I don't even love the way the Rangers are built, but because, like, yet, I think they're still a few years away from truly being a cup contender in my mind. But again, when you have a Vesna candidate goal, it goes a long you way. really never know. Uh, and that's why I'm not going to, not going to rip on you. I mean, you, you're the one who assembled this team. You're the, <laughs> you're the Nick Fury of our team. So I'm not going to completely rip on you. I happen to disagree. The, the two teams I like want the Leafs to play uh, is the Rangers and the Panthers, just because I think they remind me the most of the Leafs, in my opinion. I think very offensive minded. But again, it's if we were to play them, it's Shishkin versus Jack Campbell. I know who I'm picking at this moment. So definitely an interesting team. And mm-hmm. just to be clear, we're we're done with the Vegas pick. We are absolutely toasting the Vegas pick. I don't know where that thing even came from. I don't even know if Mario Russo was on the show at that time. This is some <laughs> other guy. I, it was, yeah, it was Rario Musso, was I think. Wario. Yeah. <laughs> Wario it Musso. was Luigi. <laughs> um, and that gets to this guy. And I picked the Carolina Hurricanes, and I'm sticking with it, to be honest. I mean, I think they're so good offensively while also being such a good – like, they're kind of a team that's capable of checking all the boxes. They're great at scoring. They have offensive skill. Depth all throughout their lineup. They have defense that's really good. Uh, and goaltending that, I mean, it's Freddie Anderson, so I know what he's known to do in the playoffs. But in front, like with that defense in front of him, it's hard to really discredit them. So I really like that team. I think I'm sticking with them. First round, they play the Washington Capitals. That's a series I think they could get through. Uh, then moving forward in the Metro, I'd probably have the Penguins beating the Rangers. So, I mean, Canes versus Penguins, I think they win that one. It would be close because it's one is a veteran team that you can never really discredit. And the other is an mm-hmm. up and coming team like the Carolina Hurricanes, but I think they do it. Then, I mean, probably Tampa, Carolina conference final. And at that point, anything could happen. Maybe that's the point where Tampa, the fact that they've played more hockey than anyone else, that's where it starts to kind of show up. And then at that point, Stanley cup finals, probably playing one of Vegas or Colorado. And then I like the goaltending matchup better for Carolina and both of those. So I think that's my pick to win the Stanley cup. And I'm, Probably sticking with it. I may even throw some money on that. Ooh, big, big spender. Ooh. Potentially. I mean, <laughs> as we get close to the Dude. playoffs, I'm pretty confident. That's my that's my cup winner, in my opinion, 2022. No, I mean, like, let's check their odds, man. Like, it's definitely worth, like, a few bucks. I know it's not the top one. That's why I considered it. I, there was a point where it was really low, and I probably should have bet on it then. Uh, and I didn't. But now I think they're probably – up there in like the top five. They're the today. second oh. favorite. Oh, they're second. Ooh. Okay, yes. Yeah, I don't love Yeah, them. it's Colorado at plus 380. Carolina at plus – this is on bet 365. Carolina That's... at plus 575. You could take Calgary oh. at plus 900. Ooh. You could take the Rangers at plus 1400. And then what was another pick? Like, dude, even Vegas has – I mean, Vegas has better odds than the Rangers, which I – wouldn't agree with but you know i can't i can't wait to bet against the leafs in the first round that's my strategy this year <laughs> do that you no three one you know why zero zero fuck it both um <laughs> two bets <laughs> no because i'll be a winner either way if you think yeah, about it that's, that's, that's cheating that's Ow. cheating you don't you don't truly you live and you die with the Toronto Maple Leafs. You feel the high highs and you cry yourself to sleep when they get I've, high highs. I've never, yeah, I've goals. never bet against a, like a team that was streaking for. I was thinking about doing it in the Super Bowl because in my heart I knew that uh, the Rams were going to win. I think everyone knew the Rams were going to win, but the odds were so much nicer for the Bengals, and it was just so much more fun. You rode that them. train, man. And we died oh, on that. Train. I could have cashed like, out too. You, you said to me, Mario. We don't cash out. We live for this team. We stick you, with them. Until you don't they die. cash out. And then the, the first play was off. a 75 And then what, what evidently fell off was Evan's phone and uh, all the glass associated with it. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right on my couch. <laughs> no glass like shattered. You know, we got it intact. Sure, we kept weren't they everything. winning at that point, too? No, they, they were losing. The Bengals were winning, and the we Bengals could have cashed out at like 50 bucks or something. And, uh, we very actually good. 50. And Damo, okay, anyways, I think I think that's a little uh bullshit if you do that. You know, that's that's not truly uh truly feeling the, the <laughs> emotions of the Toronto. I don't even know what that means. And I, I don't even know, know what, what that, that means. means. Have you guys ever watched the movie The Zohan? You do not mess with the Zohan. I've watched Always a bit of it. Great movie. 
Uh, but whatever. No, that that's I, I don't back. If you do that, that's major disappointment. But anyways, one more thing quickly before we we wrap this thing up. The logo for the playoffs changed today. I don't know yeah. if you saw it. What the hell is going on with that? I I why there was no nothing was wrong with so the logo subtle. You know what? People online are being mad at it, and I think it's just because they're in a bad mood. There's nothing wrong with it. Is there? Tell me what's wrong with it if you don't like. I it. I don't get how it's gonna go on a jersey. You know. If Neither do I. That's fan, what. Yeah. I believe it. I don't know how anything looks on a jersey. That's True. Like a cup related patch, but I don't get it. Like it's the other one was one consistent like block. Yeah. This one's like word marks that are just gonna go. Like, are they gonna completely restitch a bunch got of some words on there? I think they're gonna. I think they're probably gonna put the text mark like on the ice, and then just the cup with the twenty twenty two on there. And it's just. Again, I, I like the other one better. Like I think the other cup True. is a nicer looking cup than this one. I noticed on this cup, there's details on it. I actually see how how high my mic is. This is weird. I'll look into that after. Um, I think the the, the new cup that they put, like the actual cup itself, actually has little like engravements that you can see the new one if you would like zoom in i thought there was a it was a neat little touch but epic like, why it was <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of the cup like the, the top of that logo looks absolutely it's clean, a cool looking not, cup I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the works to be honest like i find when i look at it the o oh, just looks so big it's staring at me in the face I'm like okay play offs got you got you play offs <laughs> I'm going to look out. at the thing again. And it shows. Yeah, fully, I, I don't even have it in front of me. I just wrote like a little text, like new logo. And then kind of just wanted to hear what you guys thoughts on that were uh, playoff logo. But yeah, that, that was just weird. And I don't get what the reason for that was. I don't know why that was the top of the NHL's like order of business. Like, okay, March 7th, we're about a month away from the playoffs. What's first order of business? Yeah. The playoff logo changing it. Why? <laughs> what was wrong with it? I, I don't get what, the needs for that were but you, you know what is a good league news that's coming in that i saw today reverse retros, reverse retros. Oh, yeah. next year yeah that's maybe it's gonna be for jersey guys like us yeah that's hopefully heavy. we don't get another spoiled blueberry like the uh the reverse retros god they yeah. were, no, those I'm, were so I'm excited bad. for those I love jerseys. I, still, I mean, the, the only one I have, I ended up obviously getting that Minnesota one, which very real, by the way, if you've seen mine. It's not like ripping <laughs> or peeling or anything. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> but Jeez, I'm still Christ. looking to find another fake version. I want to get that LA one. I may it's even so that nice. one. Like, which, oh, they're so nice. the reverse nice. retro? Purple? Yeah. Oh. I, I, like, I saw that in person at an ODR. Holy cow. Yeah. I, I was gonna I was gonna pay the dude straight up 500 bucks. He could have my debit oh, card. Wow. I was gonna <laughs> give it to him for that jersey. Yeah, yeah. They have the um the the Kings always put out nice logos, man. Because I was I was at work yesterday and like I was just I was walking by the jersey section because like that's what you do when there's five minutes left in your shift and you don't want to talk to people. And there was like the the white Kings jerseys. They're so fucking nice. Like, the, like the Gretzky. Yeah, the Gretzky Gretzky's one. Style. Oh my god, they're gorgeous. When you look on the sleeves, it's like the Vegas. No, Evan, put your sleeve up for me. Evan, put put your. Oh, it's it's frozen. Like go go like shiny. that. Go like go like that for me. Like we the shiny see your part. Sleeves. We want to see your sleeves. Yeah, see like the gold, like the texture. They I didn't realize they had that on the Kings one, and it's silver. Yeah, it's so yeah. it's so nice. Oh, yeah. Weirdly, I agree with you. The Kings always for their alternates and stuff do well. Not a yeah. fan of the regular home. I mean, for uh, DSN, spoiler alert, today I put together a video ranking my top five jerseys in the NHL. Now I'm starting to look at my bottom five. Not a fan of the LA Kings. Interesting. Jersey. I don't Interesting. like their. It has like weird kind of lines on it. Like yeah, the jerseys I like, and you'll notice this when looking at when they end up going live. Those videos, I like very clean things. I don't like when they've random yeah. lines going through them and random I agree. things going through. Them. Like, I, like I like just kind of not even basics. I like cool things, but I like a clean looking jersey. I don't think the LA screams to me that that's a clean looking jersey. I like, it's almost like. It's very clunky looking, in my opinion. It's almost like yeah. the uh, the Flyers one kind of gives me that vibes too. The Flyers jerseys and, look cheap. And another hey? potential on the spoiler, bottom list. Not not a fan of that jersey. Yeah, I'm not either. They look cheap with the nameplates. I was looking at those at the Ryerson game, and Lakehead did the same thing, and they just they looked fake. Like I don't like that the nameplates. You know. Shout out to Ontario Tech. Beautiful jerseys on the road. 
They know how to yes, style Dude, those Ontario Tech jerseys are fire. They're, they're like white, orange, and like teal. Oh, they're so nice. And navy blue. Got it. All right. Uh, I'll have to look those up. But otherwise, anything else before we wrap this thing up? Any other topics you guys want to throw in here before we wrap up? Mm-hmm. Coming at all. These Good. dog days are uh, coming to a close. So soon we're going to be some getting some really meaningful hockey if we're not already in it enough. I. Couldn't have, couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> but that being said, I think I did a pretty good job hosting. You Hopefully do. you guys enjoyed it at home as well. And we'll wrap her up. New Slime Podcast, March 7, 2022. Let's head home.